thank you for tuning in. I'll just get my notes up and uh, we'll start. <clears throat> I've entitled this Knowing the Times and What to Do in Them, a message for God's people. Thank you for joining as we take a few moments to stop, look and listen to our land in the torment of a virus that simply will not go away and stops us from going back to yesterday to a time when all seems so settled and clear, whereas all we have now is an uneasy fear that our unseen foe is just playing a game and is now on the move to come back again. It's been half a year now and nothing but churn. The whole world has struggled with nowhere to turn. There seems little hope that an end is in sight, and if that is the case, then what is our plight? We hope that a vaccine will help save the day, but they tell us that could be some time away. And now, it's not just the vaccine. Meanwhile, we're all now six months older, and used to a life looking over our shoulder for what may come next as our lives unravel with everything else that's now in trouble. For one thing after another, new trials pile high. Lost family, lost friends, lost jobs, lost business, lost income, lost pastimes, and little forgiveness. When something goes wrong, it's not fair is the default. In the world we now live in, the thing we hear taught is whatever goes wrong is the other guy's fault. We see much of our kindness now growing cold with complaints that I can't just keep my life on hold. I must be allowed to do what I please and hang the call for common sense. Let someone else take the consequence. The good, the bad and the ugly. It's together in all this that we have been, as it's squeezed out of so many what's rarely been seen. It's brought out the best, and it's brought out the worst. The first have been last, and the last have been first. On one hand, key workers lay lives on the line. On the other, lie shirkers who say, I'm just fine. Some ask, how can we help? No fuss. Whereas others demand, you must do this for us. But we know that key workers and all the key men cannot put life back together again. The government can seemingly do no right. And the media seemingly does no wrong. With a pointing finger and perfect hindsight, destroy anything seems to be their song which doesn't line up with what they define as to how things should be as if this is their time. The truth, of course, is that we've never been here living with such an unstable fear. No one has faced such an unseen foe and none of us really knows just where to go. What else would any of us really do if we were in the Prime Minister's shoes? He may be in command but he cannot control that fickle virus or our fickle souls. The way we were, back to normal is just a distant dream and a future new normal is just something unseen. Whatever they say, let's not pretend it'll never be the same again. The way we were can now never be. We'll be different from here, just wait and see. Questions we ask are, what will we face and what's going on and what's taking place? But the question to ask is not what will we face, but what is God doing in what's taking place? So what is God doing in what's taking place? I said my title is Knowing the Times and What to Do in Them. So how can we know the times? And how can we know what to do in them? Perhaps in the Bible, 
we might find a key that helps us to make sense of how we now should be. So here is some help from the scriptures. We're told in 1 Chronicles 12.32 this. The children of Issachar were men who knew the times and knew what God's people had to do in them. So let's look at knowing the times. Slow down and consider God's view of the times, an assuring perspective that things with him are fine. He's still on the throne and he isn't uptight. And in his perfect time, he will do what is right. God's perspective of the times from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, and a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to uproot. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to search, and a time to give up, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to tear, and a time to mend. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Set eternity in our hearts. Yet no one can fathom what he has done right from the very start. There's nothing better for God's people to do than do good for as long as they breathe, to lean back in his arms and trust in his love, for he will judge every deed. The past is imperfect, the future is tense, but God stays supreme and his love is immense. God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. Though trials may press us and burdens distress us, he never will leave us alone. God is still on the throne and he will remember his own. His promise is true, he will not forget you. God is still on the throne. Know the times? These are his times and they are still in his hands. Psalm 2. Nations are in uproar and people plot in vain. The Lord sits and smiles. His purpose will still reign. So, knowing the times? They are his times. Okay, so what to do in them? What's he calling us to do? For God's own people, three things we bring. Stay alert, guard your heart, and save lives. He's still king. The first of those Staying alert. Mark 13. Be on your guard. Stay alert, for you do not know when the time will come which brings all to an end. Look around now at what is going on and consider 2 Timothy 3. In the last days, perilous times will come. For men will love themselves, and pride will overcome. The good and the holy will be profaned, 
and few will continue to respect his name. I'm a sovereign me, will be the call about town, and if you don't agree, I'll pull you down. Justice is now defined by me, and woe betide if you disagree. Mercy, you can leave at the door. Vengeance and slander we want more and more. Unforgiveness without measure, no more of God. We revel in pleasure. We look good on the outside, but like tombs of stone, our hearts are filled with dead men's bones. Just consider these words and look around. Then listen for a heavenly sound. Another wave is what they hear, but the footsteps of God, his people, must hear. 1 Peter chapter 5 So be vigilant, know the time, know the hour, for your adversary prowls seeking who to devour. His trade is confusion, and that's clear today, as leader upon leader blunders away. He seeks control of our nation. He used to use manipulation, but now by outright domination, he redefines truth, saying evil is higher. So pray for discernment, because he's just a liar. Pray so you know the plan he unfurls. And take heart, for the one who lives in you is greater than he who is in the world. So stay alert. Second, guarding your heart. Proverbs 4. Above all else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of your life. It's a place of smiles and a place of joy, but also it's a place of strife. Where good and evil fight for control of your thoughts and your feelings, your mind and your soul. So look inside. How are you doing? The same heart that fears can also be brave. The heart that hits out can also save. The same heart that's weak can also be strong. The same heart that's right can also be wrong. The same heart that's good can also be bad. The same heart that's bright can also be sad. The heart that's better can still get bitter. The heart that has friends can still be alone. And a heart that is soft can turn back to stone. You see, we are saved and yet being saved. We are all work in progress. Two lions war within your heart. One of good acts and one of bad deeds. Which one will win, I hear you ask? Well, that depends on who you feed. Know your own heart well. There's a voice we hear inside that tells us how we feel. It tells you what to think and it tells you that it's real. It may tell you it's the truth and your judgment is just fine. Everyone has their faults, but being wrong isn't one of mine. Or it questions all you feel, your confidence undermined. Everyone else is right, but I'm wrong all the time. Neither are really true. But you know which one is you. A case of identity theft. Who are you? Now is it really true that what seems to come out from inside you is your all about? Has your past or your pain, this world or your pride, formed a version of you, a person inside, which need not be there but your heart is divided by a voice which is loud but very one-sided? Who told you who you really are? What is the source of that powerful voice that says, well, of course you are always right, or tells you you are always wrong? 
Who is that stroking your arrogance or undermining your confidence? The devil will do what he has to do to puff you up or to cancel you. But the devil's not God and neither are you. And neither's that shouty world around you. So pray for discernment to know your heart well, to detect the voices of heaven and hell. Then choose you this day whom you will serve. Let Christ alone be who you choose. Your freedom is best when you've nothing to prove, for you follow him and he speaks for you. No accuser inside has grounds to condemn, for Jesus has taken your guilt and then he has defined your identity. You're a child of God, forgiven and free. So check out your heart. Every moment's a choice. Choose your attitude well and let that be your voice. Let Christ have your heart and take your knees to the foot of his cross where he'll make you free. So guard your heart. So what about saving lives? He was in the world which was made through him, but this dark, dark world did not recognise him. He now comes to his own who are blinded by sin, but his own look away and do not receive him. Yet to all who do, who believe in his name, he gives the right to be children of God. He isn't tame, but he's very good. John chapter 1. Look around. What's your assignment? Most missed him the first time. They're missing him now. You can reveal him. So just ask him how. In the face of these troubles, some say he's not there, while others accuse and say he's not fair. But we know he's here, and he's perfectly good. Through faith in his word, we've understood that it's sin that's caused all the troubles we see, and that Christ is God's answer. His cross is the key. What we deserve and what we receive are poles apart for us who believe. He's saved you and keeps you from the start to the end and nothing can stop him from being your friend. So take your seat at his side, see from his point of view the need of the world and what he calls you to. You go reach them the way you only can. Your assignment awaits you. Go do what you can. Your every contact leaves a trace, so trust in his amazing grace. The victory is his, we do not gain it. His purpose for us is to maintain it. So go and save lives. So what's he calling you to do and me? Stay alert. Guard your heart save lives. My title was Knowing the Times and What to Do in Them. And now all has been said, here is the conclusion of the matter. You will hear the world say, we have been here before. We'll get over this just like then. No fuss. What they miss are the signs that Jesus foresaw many of which are now all around us. And remember that even the best in life are still hopelessly lost without Christ. People may act without refinement, but keep in mind your assignment. Pagans will do what pagans do. Don't be too harsh. You were once there too. In the dark uncertainty all around you, just look and see what he calls you to do. Lift up your eyes, look around and see the part he wants you to play. He's the same tomorrow as he was yesterday.
And what about hands, face and space? You be his hands. You be his face to restore our land, to be his space. May his mercy triumph over judgment. Lord, we have heard of your fame. We stand in awe of your deeds. Repeat them in our day. In these our times, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk 3. Amen.